it's Anya here and I'm back with another video for Ophelia Talks. This is the last video for our mystery crochet along for this autumn. The case of the mysteriously disappearing blanket at Greenway, inspired by Agatha Christie. For the written pattern please go to the blog on our website and you will also find the colour table there. There is a link in the description box below this video and it will take you straight to the blog post. So this is chapter 6b and we are going to be creating the back border now. This will also create the finished look of the front border and we will then also join both borders together. So this is what we made in the previous video. So we did the front border or at least the start of the front border because what we're going to do now will change the look of the front border. So this is my front border here and as you can see it looks a little bit different from here and also it looks different from the back border. So the front border will have a little bit of an extra detail there. So let's try and create that. So we are going to have a look at how far we are. So I have cleverly hidden all the ends underneath but this is what it looks like now on the front and oh my goodness are you ready? This is what it looks like on the back. And of course, mine is a mini version, so I don't have so many ends. But you will be looking at a lot more ends, of course, because you have done 151 rows. And there will be, of course, that many ends and that many ends again. So try to make sure you are patient with your ends. Don't get annoyed with them. Don't cut them shorter, don't start tying them together, there's no need for any of that, but just tolerate them for now and your patience will pay off when you do those last few stitches when you're joining the round and they are all gone. So just, you know, leave them be basically. So we are going to get started with our yarn. So I'm making my slip knot insert the hook. I have used the same hook size for my border but if you found it uh, hard to make sure that it was straight and not wavy you might be using a slightly smaller hook. So again for the back border make sure you work really tightly. So for this back border you will notice we're using the same color because of course it's going to appear on the front as well. So I thought it would look best if it was done in the same color. So I'm going to yarn over and starting anywhere really. I'm going to start here so I can show you this side, the corner and then down the other side. You are going to go round that same post that was used when you did the front border. So yarn over, I'm going to choose a post to go round and once again make sure you're working nice and tight to avoid getting a wavy border. So I do a little tug after my stitch and folding the fabric over a little bit does help um, to sort of get access to where you need to be going. And as you can see there is a little bit of a gap that I am using. Let me just show you again, so a little tug. So here you can see these are the strands of the front border. I'm just going to go and go below that if I can at all manage that. So a little tug, making sure that things are nice and tight. So this is what it looks like on this side. And then here it looks like this. So it's nicely around the lower part of that post. So this is not done yet. These are done. So now I'm going to make my way to the corner. So two more there. And then two more around this one here. Voila. 
that. So I've done the two right before the corner here. Then I'm going to do two chains, one and two, just to make that turn. And then here, of course, we have to find those posts to go around as well. And of course, you make sure that you have your ends in between your two borders that you are creating. OK, so let's see if we can find the first one here. So yarn over around this post there and you do your front post double crochet. And then on to the next one. Remembering to keep everything nice and tight. So lay it down at regular intervals, making sure that your border is flat. Oops, don't get <laughs> don't get entangled with all the ends there. Now folding the fabric does help. Uh, to make sure that it's easier to find a location and do your stitches. But make sure you check and see that you haven't caught something that you weren't supposed to catch. So here you can see we've gone around the base of those stitches and here we have not. So we're now going to go all the way around, making sure that you have the ends in between let me show you because these are in the way <laughs> in between here your two borders. So let me continue and I will be back to show you the next round. OK, so I have made it all the way around and this is what it looks like. So you might think it looks a little bit different. It is a different look than, you know, the other borders that we used to do. So this is what it looks like. So those boxes rows, the boxes on the side, those are into the border as well. So you won't see those anymore in the finished blanket. OK, so let me just do one more here and then I will be closing this round and starting the new colour. There we go. And so here we go over, let's find the start, to this one there. Let's do a nice tight slip stitch. There we go. So I'll cut off the yarn. Voila. So then for the next round, so round two, we are going to do the same thing as we did in the round two of the previous border video. So here we did double crochet. This is half double crochet and this is half double crochet. We are now going to do a round of half double crochets, but the third round is going to be a different stitch so don't just start doing it uh, come back for the video to let me show you what to do so yarn over go under the V and let's do a half double crochet and a half double crochet in each stitch around again make sure you keep the stitches nice and tight so your border does not become wavy. When you get to the chain for the corner, you're going to do two half double crochets, two chains, and then turn here. And then the rest of the corner, you will add two more half double crochets. Then you start working on your side with your half double crochets into the V's. There we go. And this is what it looks like. I will see you at the end of the round here.
I have finished my round and look at this. Oh my goodness, I think it looks wonderful. There we go. So just one more stitch to do here. You know I like to finish together with you. There we go. And then we go over to the V there and we do a slip stitch to close the round. Ooh. Throw my spare hook around as well. <laughs> there we go. So we now have finished the second round of our back border. Now we're going to bring in another colour, another round. Again, you can start wherever you want, but this time we are doing double crochets. So the previous round was half double crochets. This time start with a yarn over and do a nice standing double crochet and so a double crochet in each stitch around. This will make up for the height that the back border is missing because of the way we have gone around these posts here. And as you can see, look now, they are the same height. So ready to be joined in the next round. So here we have just one more stitch to do before we get into the corner and into the corner chain space you're going to do two double crochets, two chains and two double crochets. And then of course we've turned the corner and there we can start working on the side. Again I am keeping my yarn tightly tensioned to make sure my stitches, my border does not become wavy. There we go. And for me at the moment everything is lying nice and flat. There's no waviness going on and I was lucky with my big one as well. I kept things really tight and nothing was wavy. So I hope you can manage to do that as well. So I will see you when you have finished the round. And I have made it all the way round. Look at this. So the last stitch here. There we go. And let's do the slip stitch and close the round. So now we have two borders that are the same height. This one and this one. This is the back border, this is the front border, which has now been transformed because we now have added those extra strands there. And now for that, <laughs> for the final round, oh my goodness, I always get a little bit giddy when I'm doing these last few things because, you know, it's quite a process filming this and designing this, making this. And for me, yeah, this is also, you know, the end of the journey. So I hope you have enjoyed, um, you know, the process so far, so far, okay, because we are doing one last round. Okay, and this is the round where it's all going to come together. All these here are going to disappear. Okay, so let's start with our final colour. Make your slip knot, insert your hook. Now this time you are going to have to start in a corner because otherwise it's not possible to sort of tally up your stitches, you know, wherever you fancy starting. So certainly in your um, main blanket, um, you make sure that all your ends are lying sort of nicely in your gutter in here and going round the corner here as well. Of course, for me, <laughs> this goes all the way, but yeah, for you, it won't do. And then we are going to get 
started here. So you've got here your corner chain space and you've got here your corner chain space. And of course, those tally up. You know that they are at the same location. So you're going to do a single crochet, another single crochet, two chains, and in there, another two single crochets. So we have made a nice corner here. And then you're going to start by picking up the V's on both the borders. So both the strands of both the V's that are lying adjacent to one another. And this will close up the border and will make all those ends disappear. There we go. So this is the back border, this is the front border. And I guess here you could choose which one you are going to keep with the look towards you. So if you have this uh, border towards you, then you have the front of the single crochet facing you. And so this I really mean to have as my front border, but now I have the back of the single crochet facing towards me. So you might need to just look at that and see which look you like the best. Okay, but I'm just going to continue because obviously this is my uh, sampler. And here I think I did it the same way on my uh, bigger blanket as well. So I don't mind which way uh, my single crochet is facing. So I am now just going to continue all along my sides here. In the corners you do two single crochets, two chains and two single crochets. As you can see, I keep on pushing these ends down into the gutter there so it's easy for me to pick up my V's. When you get to the end here, your stitches should tally up because you've done the same amount of stitches to start with. And if you've done the same thing each time on your corners, you should have the same amount. If they don't tally up, just try to make it work. Okay, so let me continue and I will see you when I have finished the round. Or better, I will see you to do the last few stitches together with you. Oh my goodness, look at this. I have nearly completed my border and it's looking so nice. So now here, um, when you get to the end of your border, obviously you have been laying these here, but of course they're here. So what I did on my big blanket as well, you can just pick this up and try and push it into the border down here. And you just go in it with your finger, you will feel it you can go down into it and you can just push this down as far as you think that those um, strands will be just, you know, in one direction and not coming up again. So that's now pushed away. This one here, I could have taken along, of course, but I didn't. So try to put that one in as well. There we go. Right, so now let's continue with closing up these and I hope it's going to <laughs> work out. It did work out everywhere else. But of course you will see that it doesn't. When I have to do this on camera, you know, it's always a little bit of a risk. You might have done one or two different ones near the corners, but one, two, one, two. Yeah, I think, uh, no, I might have one too many. Anyway, that's a good opportunity for me to show you. So I've got one, 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 and then one here. So what I would suggest you do, if you are in this situation here, you go into here and you go into that one. You do your stitch. Then you go into the next one, but you go into the 
same one that you just used so you've used it twice and you do your stitch again and then these two tally up yeah make sure I have all the strands and then these two tally up as well and that's the easiest way to sort that but like I said it tallied up everywhere else just not here typically <laughs> okay so now we are looking at that very first one here that we did closed up for us this is a V that we can go under and let's do our slip stitch there and cut off the yarn closed around and we pull out the end so here we have one end that now needs to disappear and we're still going to do that without a needle so what I generally do is I go into my border with my hook like this and I try to come out as close as possible to where my end is there I put it round the hook now I'm going to pull that through but you have got to be very careful the moment you feel it snags stop pulling okay so I'm doing this very gently mm, is this pulling or is it am I here? oh I'm here wow so look there's another color appearing so I have caught something so try not to bring that out of course there is my border color here so let's pull that one out I mean I could yeah I need to pull it out because of course it's still hanging out of there so just try as gently and as carefully as you can look there we go so that's in now right now pull to shape the border okay so now I mean I could cut this off because it's in there for a while but what I generally do as well is I just go back in come back out where I came out and just pull pull again and yeah I've, I've hit something there I was snagging onto something there that's okay just do it again until it's gone or maybe I should cut it off I'm just going to cut it off now so it's in there a couple of times that's fine I'm just going to cut this off just gently pull that and there we have it the border is complete all my ends are gone and oh my goodness there it is my little finished sample of the blanket that we have made the case of the mysteriously disappearing blanket at Greenway. I hope you have enjoyed creating this blanket. I have certainly enjoyed making this blanket for you, designing this, coming up with the stories, going to Dartmouth and filming the lookbook. Oh my goodness, it was such a lovely creative process. I hope you have enjoyed it too. Seeing the blanket come to life creating the stitches just like the characters of a book playing their own part in the story of the Greenway Blanket. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye!